we last left off, I had the uh, I got the wall tore out. It's ready to go to uh, start framing up the, uh, for this heater. So uh, what, what I did was brought the heater back in, so you can kind of see where it's going to be going and what I've got to do to get it in there. Uh, you might notice that this is in the way. So I mentioned in the last video about making a uh, header to put over the top of this heater. So in order to do that, I've got to have something. I mean, what a header is is a board that goes across the top here. And it helps support the weight of the, uh, the roof and ceiling. And it kind of disperses it around the object you're cutting out, similar to a window or door. And it goes down to the frame uh, or the foundation. So what I've got to do here is put a stud here and a stud there. Then I've got to put what's called a jack stud. The outside first stud will be called the king stud. Then I'll put a jack stud inside the king stud to whatever height the bottom of my header will go. Then my header will be a, a doubled up piece of uh, probably the 2x6, doubled up, and will sit right on top of the 2x4. Uh, Once that's on there, I'll put another jack set on top of that, and it'll complete the, the wall here, and then I'll uh, can cut this out. You know, I'll, I'll cut this out before I put my header, actually. So I'm going to put those two uh, studs first, cut this out, and then I'll start installing the header. So you can kind of see what I got to do, and I'm going to get the... All right, kind of clarify what I'm going to do. Um, so this is the heater. I hope you can see this. Make it a little bit darker. That's the heater. I'm going to put a stud here on this side of the heater, and a stud this side of the heater here. After that, I'll install what I was talking about before, a jack stud here. The header will sit on top of the jack stud, above where the heater slides in. And another jack stud on top of this all the way to the ceiling. And that'll make a, a, a sturdy joint. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Alright, so what I've done here is I cut out a uh, 4 inch block. And the reason I did that is because this uh, piece of wood here they used to frame up the uh, this wall with in double wide is only 3 inches wide. So I wanted to give myself self something that was as wide as the 2x4 is I'm going to be using in order to have a better place for them to sit on. Um, probably didn't have to do this, but I just feel a little, a little bit better about it. Uh, just give it a little bit uh, more of a place to sit on. I won't have any of the uh, 2x4 actually overhanging. So that's why I uh, did that. Oh, and another reason I did it is because of the 2x4s that I got are 93 inches, which is what you would get. It's 8 feet minus 3 inches. So a two by four is an inch and a half wide this way. So if you add that times two, that'd make three inches. Well, on the top of a wall, you've got one of these. On the bottom of a wall, you got a two by four. And then you put your studs this way in between the two pieces, kind of like this. So you'd have it like that. I'd be on top and I'd be on the bottom. So they have them 93 inches. That way you can buy them. You don't, have, you don't even have to cut them for an eight foot ceiling. You can just slide them in there. It saves you a little bit of time, um, but this wall here, since these boards are a little bit, they're not quite two by fours, they don't, they're not enough. Um, they're about an inch and a half too short. So by adding this here, it makes it, uh, it makes my 93 inch uh, boards be able to work a lot better. So next step is going to be to um, get the, bring some boards in here and, and put my king studs in on each side. I forgot to mention I'm going to be attaching everything with a. Uh, screws not nails um, if I was doing a larger project I might use nails but I just like screws better and I've got a lot of uh, decking screws left over uh, I like using these with a small head uh, they hold really good and they use the, these top threads here are a little bit of a different pattern they're, they're opposite of the other ones uh, let me get the zoom in and that, that's actually what holds your uh, board down that does a better job I think than the top of a just the top of a screw head and these don't strip out they um, make the wood split as bad so I really like these only problem that I can see with them it's not really much of a problem is you can drive them too deep um, you see here I've already got a couple of minutes just to hold this bottom board down but uh, but yeah I like these uh, a lot better than nails um, when you're screwing something these are a lot easier to get back out than a nail and they also hold a lot better because you got all these threads holding all these threads right here holding uh, the wood together versus a, a slick nail holding something in. Um, people have their preferences and uh, I just personally think screws are better. Alright, so what I'm going to do now 
now. They got my uh, 2x4, 93 inch 2x4, like I said uh, previously. I'm going to set it in here and it should fit very tightly. knock it all the way to the other uh, joist that, or the stud that's there. Um, you don't have to do that. You can leave it where you want to if you have a wall and you just want to set it away from a, a stud. But just since that stud's here, I'm going to add it to that stud and I think it'll make the wall a lot sturdier in my case. Uh, in your case, if you uh, wanted to just leave the stud out by itself, what's called the king stud, I would recommend getting a level of some kind. This is old cheap level here, but it, it does the job. Uh, anyway, getting, getting your uh, stud level, and that'll make your measurements and everything else in the wall straight. Uh, makes everything work a lot better. So keep that in mind if you're keeping your uh, stud by itself. And I might have to do the same thing in a second because there's, there's no guarantee that stud that's already there is straight uh, as it is. I'm going to show you here um, when you're fixing the stud to the bottom of the uh, plate. You want to have this pretty... Uh, my camera what they call flush which means this is lined up just perfectly flat and you can feel your hand and feel right there that it's perfectly flat so basically this board here it's just sitting against this stud here it's on the back side of this board so that's gonna make a really strong really strong joint there and um, next step would be to, to do the other side and do the exact same way and then I'll start adding the uh, jack studs in the header Alright, so I've got both the king studs installed here and here. I put them in here, I screwed them straight to the other studs. Um, you can't really see it on this wall, but it's, it's right behind it. Now the next step will be cutting out this middle stud in order to make a place for the insert to go into. Now earlier you remember I marked a, I put a mark right here. That's where the top of the heater is. But to do a, um, a header, you might, I might go over it. Now since I'm doing a 2x6, a 2x6, the uh, width is not six inches, it's actually half an inch shorter, so it's five and a half inches. So I need to go five and a half inches up from this, and that's where I need to cut this board out. The bottom of this board, or where I've got this mark here, is where it is how long my jack studs will need to be on the sides. So I'll have one there and there for the header to sit on top of. So basically what I'm going to do, is you can either me measure your heater, and then measure up where you want the top of this to go. I went a little bit above where my heater is, just to give myself a little extra room where the bottom of my uh, head will be. That way I got plenty of room to kind of adjust it if I need to. I will uh, go over it five and a half inches. Give myself a mark there to go with. And uh, I want that to be kind of tight so that this, uh, this board sets on it. And if I don't like this board, I might replace this one or add a, uh, another two by four to this board here because this is only like I said a uh, uh, three by two and uh, two by four is a little bit sturdier than this one is so all right so getting ready to cut this uh, board got it marked here um, remember the five inches above where the top of the heater is going to go to allow a place for our header to go into um, this receptacle here I turned it back on just convenient uh, saw that runs off 110 uh, they make battery powered um, well, I say Sawzall, but that's called a reciprocating saw. You can get different brands. So basically, we're going to cut along this line here. This is the easiest way to uh, cut this. You could use a probably a circular saw, but I think this is um, a lot a lot better to uh, cut a stud like this. The uh, only thing you got to keep in mind is you can get off, uh, maybe cut an angle. So a trick to get away, uh, to kind of get around there, at least help you, is to mark your mark all the way around the board. Just take a um, what's called a speed square. You can hold it up and go all around the board with it. 
And I'll show you one of those in another video or maybe later on this video what that, that tool is. And that way you can kind of watch um, as you cut, make sure you keep it straight. So we're going to do that now. It's a little dangerous, but that's what I had to do. The easiest way to do it. Got the job done. So now, take this board here and pretty much just pull it out. This one's barely hanging. Um, some of the mobile mobile home in here and there. And uh, that's how we're supported. Or uh, like I said earlier, the bare minimum they can do to uh, to get by with. That's what they'll do to make a home. So I might go ahead and add another stud here to this. Uh, the header here. All right, so what I'm going to be doing now is cutting the uh, the header for for the uh, the fireplace. I actually already had a uh, couple two by sixes that were already screwed together, luckily from another project I was doing. So I just going to leave these together. Uh, I found a place where there's no screws. Um, I've had it actually screwed together here. Um, if you if you do have a piece of wood, you're going to cut with some nails or screws in it. Just kind of look around and make sure that you're not going to be cutting through the screws. Because it can damage your saw blades, and it can damage your tools, and you can get metal in your eyes. And you should actually be wearing safety glasses. I'm not. Don't do that because I'm a dummy. But basically, that's it. So I've got my measurements here. Uh, I'm going to take them off there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you my measurements because my measurements will probably be different than your measurements. And if I tell you mine, I don't want somebody messing up their project. So do your own measuring. And... Told you I'd show you what the speed square is. This is speed square. So I got my initial mark here. Put this on the side of the board. It keeps my line square. Mark it all the way across so I can see it. Um, this saw here has actually a laser on it. Uh, I like it in some ways. Some ways I don't. Um, the good thing is, is it's right in the middle where the blade will be cutting. The downside is, is if I need to make an exact cut, I kind of want to get my mark. And then put the blade to either side of the mark and just barely hit the edge of the mark. That way I get an exact cut. So that's what I'll be doing here. I'm not going to really rely on the laser. Just kind of pull the blade down. Don't turn it on until you get where you want it. I've already checked for nails and stuff here, so nothing there. <laughs> This saw is a good saw. I've, uh, I got it on good uh, for a decent, decent price. It's lasted me a while. It's done pretty good. I've got a finishing blade on it. Uh, the more tooth you have on your blade, the smoother the end, end cut will be. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's very smooth. If you had less teeth, it would it'd be more of a coarse cut. For framing, it really doesn't matter. But more for finish work, it matters. So I've got that, that cut. So now I'm going to be cutting my... Uh, jack studs. Okay, so I'm back inside. Um, got my jack studs here. I'll we'll start off. We've got one sitting here already. Basically, I'm just going to set it on top of the other board. Um, should be this, the right length because we've, we've measured for our header. Um, the, length of, the length of this board here. So everything should be right. Got my screw gun. I'm going to line it up flush here at the bottom. Move out of the way so you can see. Lined up pretty good at the bottom. Pretty good, I guess. One there. I'm going to line it up here at the top. And now I'm going to go down through here and put two or three more screws. Um, I'm going to kind of stagger them back and forth and it just adds more strength to the, uh, the overall uh, pit of the boards. Alright, I've got both jack studs in place. There and there. I'm ready to put my header on top of those now. And if everything's measured right and cut right, it should fit on here like a glove. Let's see if I did a good job. 
side first. This out of the way. Flush there, got my drill here. I'm on what's called toenail it in with these screws. Pretty easy. Oh yeah, that went in very easy. Um, that's why you measure twice, cut once. This is an impact wrench, or I mean a screw gun. Whenever it um, gets uh, any resistance, it will actually hammer to keep the uh, screw going. So it's a very useful tool to use. I like using it better than a regular drill. I believe that will hold that pretty good. I will knock this over. Which is what we want. Get my level out. Level it up. And that's right on the money. And I might not even worry about um, putting on a stub there. I think that's going to be fine. Um, so pretty much, I'm going to put a couple screws in here, and then we'll be ready to uh, build our wall out here, and that'll be the last step as far as framing the wall goes, and um, we'll be done until we actually uh, do the pallet wall, did the finish work on the outside of the wall here. So that's where we're at right now, and I guess we'll uh, start another video, do a part three to this for the framing of the outside wall. <laughs> 